Welcome to Revival Time Hub. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. As he comes. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Really, really honored to be here, Pastor Nat. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, the Hallelujah Challenge family, thank you so much for this opportunity in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to be praying. I want to charge our hearts and then we'll pray. Um, I always say that God's method is his word. His method to do anything in the kingdom is by his word. Pastor Nat, I love you and thank you so much for this opportunity to bring God's word to the nations. I want to charge our hearts tonight because I believe that it is in the destiny of every believer to be fruitful. To be fruitful. To be fruitful. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. The Bible tells us that God made man in his image and after his likeness and he gave them dominion when we get to verse 28 of genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 this is going to be our area of focus tonight because I believe that God desires for everyone to experience fruitfulness. He says, and I will make the exceeding fruitful. Say amen. amen. Let me start again. I will make the exceeding fruitful. He says, and I will make nations of thee amen. and kings shall come out of thee. Amen. Let me give you one last scripture. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 10. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 10 that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Then he says, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. A few things I want us to know tonight as we just prepare our hearts to pray and to receive. Number one, that God desires for all believers in Christ to be fruitful. It is in our corporate destiny. You have to believe this. That God desires for you and I to be fruitful. Someone say, I will be fruitful. Tonight is a very prophetic night. Don't be careless with your words. Say, I will be fruitful. So God desires for all believers, including you and I, to be fruitful. Number two, that one of the major ways that God is glorified in the life of the saints and on earth is through our fruitfulness, our results. The Bible tells us very clearly that when the saints bear fruit, God is glorified. Genesis, I mean, uh, John chapter 15 and verse 8. John 15 and verse 8, he says, Herein is our Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Same John 15 and verse 16. He says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you to go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That your fruit should remain. Say it again, I receive grace to be fruitful. I receive grace to be fruitful. Yes, our results bring glory to God. Our results bring honor to us. This is very important. You have to understand the foundation for your contending for fruitfulness. That in my being fruitful, God is glorified. Remember one time Jesus came and saw a fig tree. The tree had leaves but had no fruit. And you would think Jesus would spare the tree because at least it was looking green. He cursed it and said fruit will not be born from you again. That means that he was, he, he, he expected. And you know, the Bible says that was even a time. It was not a time of fix. But provided it was taken from the earth, he expected fruit. Hallelujah. When God, uh, when the saints manifest results, extraordinary results in every area of your life, God is glorified. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, it says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. I hope we're learning now. In um, 
Matthew chapter 5, Jesus was teaching. And when we get to verse 13, he says, you are the salt of the earth. He says, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing except to be cast down and to be trodden under foot of men. Then he says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but that it is kept on a candlestick and it giveth light to all who are in the house. I like verse 16. It says, let your light so shine. The word let means permit. Do not restrict. Do not restrain. Let your results be evident. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father and glorify your father i want you to know that god is glorified when you bear fruit so number one it's in our corporate destiny in christ to be fruitful number two that one of the major ways we bring glory to god is through our results our results bring glory to god the third thing i want you to know very quickly as we prepare to pray is that fruitfulness is not a gift it is a resultant effect of engaging specific kingdom laws. Let me take that again. Please listen. You are following from across the globe. Fruitfulness is not a gift. It is a resultant effect of engaging certain kingdom laws. Paul was speaking to his son in the gospel in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15. He said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all. The appearance of your profit, your fruitfulness, you see, is a product of your meditating on these things, giving yourself wholly to them. And I'm going to be giving you those things in, you know, just three or four keys or perhaps a bit more than that. I'll just list it just so you know that fruitfulness is not a gift. If you find a believer commanding great results it is all the grace of god but i want you to know that as far as fruitfulness is concerned certain kingdom keys when i stepped into this studio i mean you, you could just sense the mighty presence of god i can imagine the many the multitudes across the nations being blessed by the sounds of worship but how many of you know that the competence that was deployed in producing this dimension of glory was not a gift the grace is a gift are we together but the competence that partners with that grace is not a gift it's a product of knowledge in this studio we have exceptional people behind the camera making this available to the nations pastor nat is here with his trumpet you know we've had the opportunity to minister the gospel with him around the world and sometimes i just stand amazed as he just draws forth from his spirit worshiping the grace is there but it answers to competence i'm telling you that fruitfulness like you will be learning is not a gift so for many of you who desire to manifest fruit to produce results that bring consolation to your christian experience and glory to the name of the lord it's important you know this that there is a part you have to play and i'm going to be running through that list if you get this tonight then you have profited from tonight's edition of hallelujah challenge it is not a gift the engracing is a gift but you must take advantage of that grace and engage with it profitably who is ready to learn let's take a minute to pray before i run through the list my heart is open show me the key show me the key the key that makes for fruitfulness across the earth make sure you are praying across the globe from america to canada to us to africa to nigeria go ahead and pray open my heart open my eyes to see god desires that i am fruitful hallelujah praise the name of the lord so it's important for us to know that fruitfulness is a resultant effect of engaging specific kingdom laws i want to list them and please write i may not have the time to explain i'm just giving a charge and then to lead us in prayer to speak over our lives so that we walk with the time allotted number one 
The first key that controls fruitfulness, and please listen, these are not suggestions, these are not opinions. Behind the enviable result of everyone who has excelled commendably in the kingdom are these keys. If you engage them, I give you a guarantee. You will thank the Lord. You will call Pastor Nat and say, thank you for tonight's edition. Because in it, I found a key. Hallelujah. Number one, the first key that controls fruitfulness in the kingdom is that you must be genuinely connected to Jesus the vine. John chapter 15 from verse 1. Very quickly, you must be genuinely connected to Jesus the vine. Here's what the Bible says. John 15 verse 1. I am the true vine. There are false vines. But Jesus said, I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Verse 2. He says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. The expression there is not that he, he is the word he prunes so that it could bear fruit. He purges so that it will produce more fruit. Verse 3, he says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. We're reading to 5. Verse 4, abide in me. Someone say, I will abide. I will abide. Say it again. Say, I will abide. I will abide. It says, abide in me. Verse 4, and I in you. He says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except that's the condition except it abides in the vine no more can ye except you abide in me verse 5 let's shout it together it says i am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me let me tell you ladies and gentlemen this business of Jesus is beyond religion and fanatism. Jesus says he is the vine. And he made it clear in this scripture that without him, you may be intelligent, profitably so. You may be vast, you may be exposed, but there is a dimension of success that only partnership with Jesus brings. And so when we tell the nations to take Jesus seriously and to declare his lordship over their lives, it is beyond just some spiritual activity of fanatics. We are bringing you to a life that is beautiful and enviable. Jesus said, I am come that ye may have life. He says, come unto me all ye that are weary, heavy laden, I will give you rest. First key, you must be genuinely connected to Jesus the vine. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 7. Is someone learning already? Hmm. He says now 6 and verse 7. Are we together? Did I get that right? First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 7. Oh, let me move to another scripture. I think I missed something there. So number one, you must be genuinely connected to Jesus the vine. It says, for without me, ye can do nothing. Number two, very quickly, you must believe that it is the will of God for you to be fruitful. Hallelujah. You must believe. Say, I believe. I believe. In fact, let me turn it into a prayer. Say, Father. Father. Come on, pray like believer. Say, Father. Father. I, believe I believe that it is your will for me to be fruitful. Say, Father. I believe that it is your will for me to be fruitful. Therefore, I declare fruitfulness is my heritage. Turn it to prayer for one minute. I believe the righteousness that is of faith. I believe that it is the will of God for me to be fruitful. I believe in addition to being connected to the vine, In Jesus' name we pray. Psalm 92, please, very quickly from verse 12. I believe. And you know, whilst I'm speaking here, uh, I'm ministering to my own self. I truly believe that it is God's desire for me to be fruitful. If you do not believe that God is glorified in your fruitfulness, you will not be able to walk in keeping with the things that make for results. It says the righteous. Who is the righteous here? The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. It says he shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Verse 13. It says, um, give us verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Verse 14. 
they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Who believes that? Psalm 1 and verse 3. The Bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever. Say whatsoever. Business, ministry, career, family, whatsoever. By this word I decree and declare for someone who is following across the globe, everything that has refused to prosper in your hand, here at this studio, here at Hallelujah Challenge, we curse it in the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. Number one, you must be genuinely connected to Jesus the vine. I'm giving you the keys. Number two, you must believe it is the will of God for you to be fruitful. Are you ready for number three? You must contend for knowledge. You must contend for knowledge. Fruitfulness in the kingdom is a product of light. In fact, every result in the kingdom is a product of light. The ignorant believer is also a, be a defeated believer. The ignorant believer is a defeated believer. And when it has to do with knowledge, there are two dimensions of knowledge. One, spiritual knowledge. But number two, the knowledge of the laws of life. I, I want you to please listen. When it has to do with the knowledge that translates to fruitfulness, to victory, there are two dimensions. Number one, spiritual knowledge. They, the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Are we together? So the knowledge of God and the laws of the kingdom. But number two, there are laws that govern this life. Ladies and gentlemen, because you are walking in the world of men and you must understand the laws of relationship. You must understand the law of honor. These are laws that make for your excelling within the cosmos. Many believers have spiritual knowledge but, but they lack the knowledge of the laws of life you need both the knowledge of god and the, and the things of the spirit but you need to understand the laws of life did you know someone can receive a prophetic word for instance but simply because you do not know how to maintain relationships you can recycle pain indefinitely in your life for not understanding one law alone for instance, another law of life, the law of diligence. Now, most spiritual laws have their expressions as the laws of life too. So when you learn the ways of God, you will find out that you are almost automatically learning the laws of life. Who believes what you're hearing? You must go for knowledge. Say in the name of Jesus, I contend for knowledge in this season. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I contend for knowledge. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, when it has to do with knowledge, you must press. You must press. I remember one time uh, during one of the conferences, I was having a conversation with Pastor Nat and I was just saluting his competence. I was telling him, beyond being anointed, truly, you are competent. I've heard many, many people with all due respect play trumpets. I know they are anointed, but you can see the gap in knowledge. Are we together now? The beauty of knowledge is that when grace comes upon knowledge, it produces excellence. Grace upon knowledge. Go for knowledge. For someone, you need to get relevant materials around the area where you seek to see results. Be competent. Be competent. Are you ready for number four? Very quickly, the fourth key that controls fruitfulness is that you must give yourself to prayer. Give yourself to prayer. Give yourself to prayer. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer. There is a dimension of results. The root of fruitfulness starts from the spirit. Like every tree has roots. The root is the invisible part. Are you seeing now? But you see the vine, the branches, and the fruit. But you detach it from the root, you will fail. Let me tell you this. The root of every man's excellence in the kingdom is your prayer life. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. You are either a house of prayer or a den of robbers. 
and the robber that comes here is Satan himself. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We will give ourselves continually to prayer. Mark 11 and verse 24. Jesus was speaking. He caused the fig tree. And when they came and saw that his faith was producing, they said, what, what is the mystery? You caused this tree and now it had dried up. And he told them, you also can produce that result. He said, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, say, I will pray. I will pray. Say it again, I will pray. I will pray. He says, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. In the name of Jesus, everyone's prayer life that has gone down, you are connecting from across the globe. You are trusting God for your prayer life to be fanned back to flame. I pray for you. Standing in faith with my friend and brother, Pastor Nat, I speak over your prayer life. Let fresh fire come upon it now. Let fresh fire come upon it now. Let fresh fire come upon it now fresh fire upon your prayer altar zeal to pray zeal to fast zeal to travail until you war in the spirit and birth victory in the name of jesus give yourself to prayer don't say i'm a businessman if you are a christian businessman it means you are also a prayerful businessman if you are a Christian businessman, a Christian, you know, um, IT person, a preacher, once you are a child of God, in fact, once you are a man, Luke 18.1, he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Again, shout it, say, I will pray. Let it be a commitment from your heart. A prayerful worshiper is a worshiper with power. A prayerful businessman is a businessman with results. A prayerful preacher is a preacher with potency and results. One more time, say, I will pray. I will pray. Key number five, very quickly. You want to be fruitful and to produce results. The fifth key is that you must be valuable and productive. You must be valuable and productive. Proverbs 22 and 29. You must be valuable and productive. You must be valuable and productive. To be valuable means to sustain the ability to provide solutions. Solutions that are needed and useful. Are we together now? To be productive means to package your value, turn it into products and services, and to serve it intelligently to a targeted consumer base. It says, see it thou a man, any man, diligent in his business. See it thou, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi, diligent in his business he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before mean men everyone you see standing before kings in righteousness also honor the law of diligence proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4 we're about to pray now proverbs 10 and verse 4 is god challenging someone 10 and verse 4 he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand but the hand of the diligent make it rich. Listen, let me take a minute and challenge my dear people in Nigeria, in Africa, and across the globe. Whilst we are trusting God for a better economy, while we pray for the government for wisdom, you must take responsibility over your destiny and believe that the grace for fruitfulness is yours by reason of being in Christ, but I must engage to be valuable. I curse the spirit of laziness. I curse the spirit of carelessness. Giving flimsy excuses and justifying failure and mediocrity. I command here at Hallelujah Challenge, may that spirit depart from you. Every man who loves the Lord, listen Nigeria, listen Africa, find something in righteousness to do. The Bible says, whatsoever your hand findeth to do. I'm not talking of blindly hustling. The Bible says, to walk circumspectly as wise. Don't waste the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. Whilst we worship and we obtain grace from God, we must take advantage of that grace and engage it meaningfully. Many of you have not taken the first step. That's why you've not seen that what is on you is really true. The grace will look dormile, uh, I mean, I'm a dormant and docile until you engage it. Someone is getting angry. Go and register that company. Hallelujah. 
Go and register tomorrow. Get a lawyer. All you have is 100,000. It's enough to start. The signs follow as you move. They don't go before you. You take a step of faith, believing. Then the signs go before you. Go for knowledge. Be valuable. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let us conquer the spirit of laziness. If we desire to be fruitful, go for knowledge. Contend for knowledge. Engage. Engage. Be valuable. Serve the nations with your value. Whether you are a businessman, give it your best. You are a worshiper like Pastor Nath. Go and do your homework. Whilst you pray, trust God for grace intelligence bring the songs that become ladders and god will use it to bless the nations and also bless you who is learning and then number six this will be the final key and then we'll pray let me recap one to five and then i give you six number one that you must be genuinely connected to jesus divine number two that you must believe that it is the will of god for you and i to be fruitful number three Knowing that knowledge is not a gift, you pursue it, the Bible says, by the truth. You must contend for knowledge, spiritual knowledge and the knowledge of the laws of life. Number four, you must give yourself continually to prayer. Number five, you must be valuable and productive. And number six, you must engage the prophetic. Ezra chapter six and verse 14. Someone is preparing to pray now. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. And the elders of the Jews built it. And they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel. Listen, let me tell you something. There is a dimension of success in the kingdom that is a product of prophecy. And when I talk of the prophetic, it's important for you to look away from some of the abuses that have come around the prophetic ministry. I would always observe that whilst we are trusting God to keep cleaning up the prophetic ministry, the Bible says despise not prophesying. Because in a few minutes, you are going to be hearing certain prophetic words in the name of Jesus Christ. Those words will come and shift the climate of your life in one moment. Who believes that? I am a product of prophecy. People have prophesied over my life. Do you know, I would always tell you that as powerful as Jesus is, the word of God, there were three prophets that had to play a role in his life. Number one was Simeon the prophet. He lifted him and blessed him. Number two, Anna the prophetess. Number three, John the Baptist, who even ordained him in ministry. You need the prophetic. When all is said and done, the value of the prophetic is that you engage other keys too. You do not leave other keys and then receive the prophetic alone. It will look important. But when all other things are done well, the prophetic comes as an icing on the cake. A businessman is about to shift now. In the name of Jesus, a pastor who is watching is about to shift now. Open your mouth and begin to appropriate these keys. Yes, sir. Take a minute to receive these words. I am exceedingly fruitful. This is my season of fruitfulness. Fruitful in every good work, producing extraordinary results. Extraordinary results in ministry extraordinary results in business extraordinary results are you praying hallelujah Release your spirit, you are about to receive prophetic words. Yahweh 
Hallelujah. Hold on. I want us to do something prophetic. Listen. I don't know what area you seek to be fruitful in. But for the next two minutes, I want you to place it before you. As you sing this song prophetically, Pastor Nat will lead us through this prophetic procession. For the next one or two minutes, if it's in the area of your job, if you're a man of God, you are trusting God for exploits in ministry. Listen, we are not just chanting and shouting. We are not foolish people. These are the ways of the Spirit. For some of you, you are trusting God to bring order to your life. The disarray and disorderliness is too much. I don't know what that area is, but let it be before you that as we worship for the next one, two minutes, you are saying, Lord, I'm connecting to my prophetic worship to this area. I must be fruitful. Are you ready now? Yes, sir. the globe everywhere from this studio to the nations of the earth mention the areas in your life that you desire to see results that between now and the end of the year December 2024 not 2025 release your faith now pray being fruitful in every good work someone is praying be fruitful in every good work. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. Exceedingly fruitful. Fruitful in ministry. Fruitful in your finances. Fruitful in your family. Take a minute to pray. 
Bring before the Lord that area. Make mention by faith. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, it says to make your request known. Make your request known. Make your request known. Are you praying? In the name of Jesus, Pastor Nat, I sense that there is an unusual anointing for women trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Women trusting God for the fruit of the womb. We are going to be praying but there are many people who are talking of fruitfulness in every area but I believe from tonight there will be testimonies across the globe. Now listen, if you are a woman trusting God for the fruit of the womb it doesn't matter what the medical report is. We are going to dedicate the next one minute for your sake before we speak just to honor this prompting of the spirit as we raise this song just one more time for one minute i'd like you to place your hand on your womb as you sing and dance this pro you just honor this instruction if you are with your husband and he's awake and he can follow or connect and you can stand in for someone if you're in the studio here or around you may not be the one trusting god for for yourself but there may be someone 10 years 15 years 20 years the scripture is in is found in genesis 21 and verse 1 and the lord visited sarah as he has said Hallelujah. and the lord did unto sarah as he has spoken are you ready now we are going to sing that song away sabaoth one more time calling upon this mighty god lay your hands and believe for a miracle Fruitfulness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Fruitfulness. Oh, let the barren be a joyful mother of children. 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 listen the mind is also a womb and it can be barren there are many people who have physical children but the womb of the mind is barren you're going to lay your hands on your head all across the nations as a prophetic action that in the name of Jesus the wisdom needed for this season to excel in an unusual way Job said in the days that the candle of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. He said by his light I saw light. I want you to pray. There is light that gives illumination and there is light that gives direction. Listen again. There is light that gives illumination and there is light that gives direction. Direction is a waste if understanding is not there. I'd like you to lay your hands on your head and in one minute begin to make declarations. The wisdom for the season, the strategies for the season is a businessman praying. Is a politician praying? Is a man of God praying? The strategy for the next level of ministry, the next level of kingdom exploit, and thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, and you will find rest for your soul. Someone is praying, Deliver unto me, O God, by your tender mercies. The strategy for the next season, I place my hand upon my head, my mind is fruitful. I have the mind of Christ. I receive by the spirit of grace. Financial strategies. Ministerial strategies for excellence. Business strategies. Strategies to scale that organization. Rateka lega baranto sotobeke debeleketa. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now you are going to use your hands prophetically as a point of contact. The Bible says God will bless the works of your hands. Are we together now? Yes, sir. You are going to pray and say, Father, place grace upon these hands that everything I'm involved with in righteousness in this season, let it work. Let it produce. And Isaac sowed in that land. And the Bible says he reaped that same year a hundredfold. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The works of my hands are blessed. That includes your job. That includes your ministry. That includes your business. That includes your career. Come on, someone pray. A doctor is praying. A lawyer is praying. An engineer is praying. An architect is praying. A man of God is praying. A worshiper is praying. A diplomat is praying. Nothing dies in my hands. Nothing dies in my hands. I'm fruitful I'm fruitful I'm fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ in Jesus name we pray now you have prayed let me speak over your life Pastor Nat it's an honor again to do this with you let me plead that you help me with the trumpet you see there's something about me and Pastor Nat ministering is a mystery that I have seen I have seen gates open for nations. It's not a ritual. I truly believe as a, something comes upon me every time he blows this trumpet. And I'm going to be making prophetic declarations from America to Canada, Kuwait, somewhere in Asia, Dubai, Africa, wherever you are. Listen, the prophetic is God's bailout system. Some of you, the pit you are in right now, you cannot bring yourself out. God has sent us by his mercy as instruments of deliverance. There is something called a song of deliverance. He says, alas, master, it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? I'm speaking over people who have been in debt. I'm speaking over people who have been distressed. I'm speaking over people you have seen closed doors all around you. At midnight, that Paul and Silas, they prayed and they sang. And everyone heard them. But then an earthquake came. And the Bible says all the doors opened and the chains that held their hands were loose. I'm going to ask Pastor Nat to blow that shofar. And the moment he blows it, I'm going to begin to prophesy over your life. Are you ready to receive now? Do not miss this prophetic moment. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. In the name of Jesus, close doors be open now. Close doors be open now. Close doors, career doors, marital doors, financial doors, ministerial doors. I come with the voice of prophecy. Ephata, be open now. Ephata, be open now. In the name of Jesus, I command a triumphant entry for someone. A triumphant entry in the name of Jesus into the next season of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, everyone assigned by God to hold your hand in this season and to help you into the next prophetic season, wherever they are, I prophesy to the north, I prophesy to the south, the east and the west, may they gravitate towards your destiny. May they gravitate towards your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to pray a prayer for you. That I always pray for my people. Pastor Nat, I have learned that it's one thing to be valuable. But if those around you do not need the value you carry, you will still be despised. When God wants to help a man, 
he does not only engrace you to be valuable, he keeps changing your audience until you stand before those who have an appreciation for what you carry. There are many gifted people, gifted worshippers, men and women of God. You are interpreting the dreams of the wrong people. That's why you are still in the prison. Joseph interpreted the dream of three people. Two of them left him in the prison, but when he interpreted the king's dream, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you where your gifting has been despised where the value you carry has been despised i pray for you may the lord change your audience may god change your audience until you stand before those who have an appreciation for what you carry until you stand before those who can reward what you carry in the name of jesus lift up your voice in one minute and sow a seed over the hallelujah challenge seven years of impact seven years of exploits go ahead pray father it's from glory to glory let your hand rest afresh upon your man servant that as he brings the sounds of prophetic worship to the nations it will be from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ as you are praying for him you are praying for yourself as you are declaring over him you are declaring for yourself in the name of jesus that this great ministry goes from glory to glory glorifying jesus bringing the sounds of worship the sounds of healing the sounds of deliverance in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the name of the lord pastor Nat, i'm truly grateful for this opportunity and i believe with all my heart that someone who connected tonight and will be connecting for all through the days that are left, I'm praying for you that you will return with testimonies. Amen. Let me lend my voice with the man of God to encourage you. Be sure to send in your testimonies. Testimonies are beyond just trying to validate that a man is anointed. You are giving God glory by letting the nations know that his word works. So I'm encouraging someone. There's a link that you'll be seeing on your page or whatever, you know, the platform. Make sure that you take advantage of it. Let Pastor Nat know that as he lifted the sound of worship, as we ministered, that God stepped in supernaturally and did a miracle for you. For now, be blessed. In the name of Jesus, you will experience his hand from glory to glory. One more time, shout, I am fruitful. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, I have the honor to take the altar call. I love to do this. Thank God for the minute or two that I have to do this. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Please lend me your attention. The Lord is speaking to you. You can receive a miracle, but without Jesus Christ, it will mean nothing. I want to give someone an opportunity who is following online. Maybe you are even watching as a way of rebroadcast. You're connecting by the message of God. I want to give you an opportunity to make it right with Jesus right now. As I lead you to pray this prayer, wherever you are, your home, your car, sitting on your couch, perhaps on your laptop, your phone, your device, Perhaps you are not even there, but you are listening to someone who is listening to this broadcast. I'd like you to lift your hand right where you are and say these words after me. Mean them from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I have heard your word. I declare that I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I declare that you are my savior. You are my Lord. You are my king. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i'm a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb i go forward ever and backward never amen 
let me pray for you father thank you for these ones across the globe who have made this noble decision the bible says as many who will come to you you will in no way cast away i pray for you in the name of jesus that the grace to walk in victory let it be yours from today and i declare that you will know the lord you will grow in grace and you will be an effective believer and an effective witness bringing glory to the name of the lord in jesus much less name we pray amen and amen god bless you and thank you thanks for watching revival time hub but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.